seated, we praise him, we glorify him. We honor the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the great I am that I am. We praise you, Lord, today. As we come to preach the word of God, during this Advent season, come with me to another familiar scripture for this season, the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, Matthew chapter 11, verses 1 through through 11. And as you're able, won't you stand out of reverence for God's holy, holy word. Listen now, listen to the word of the Lord. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he left and began teaching and preaching in the towns. John, John the Baptist, was in prison when he heard what Jesus Christ was doing. So John sent some of his followers to ask Jesus, are you the one or should we be looking for another? Or must we wait for someone else? And Jesus answered, you go and tell John what you have heard and seen. The blind are now able to see and the lame can walk. People with leprosy are being healed and the deaf can hear. The dead are raised to life and the poor are hearing the good news. God will bless everyone who doesn't reject me because of what I do. So John's followers were going away and Jesus spoke to the crowds about John. What sort of person did you go out into the desert to see? Was he like tall grass blown out by the wind? What kind of man did you go out to see? Was he someone dressed in fine clothes? People who dress like that live in the king's palace. What did, you, what, what did you really go out to see? Was he a prophet? He certainly was. And I tell you that he was more than a prophet. He was more than a prophet. In the scriptures, God says about him, I'm sending my messenger ahead of you to get things ready for you, Jesus. And I'll tell you that no one ever born on this earth is greater than John the Baptist. But whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. The word of God for the people of God Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And now won't you pray for and with me? Oh God, as I take this my assignment to give you glory by preaching the word of God, by looking into the Bible, the only truth there is I come asking that you would allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart that they be available to you, that you will be pleased with them. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will my will be lost in thine. 
In Jesus' precious and holy name I pray. Amen. Put a smile on your face today. You all are so beautiful. And you are too. Just turn around and say to somebody who isn't here, talk to them. Say the sermon topic is sermon topic. safe in his arms. Safe in his arms. Jesus said in our scripture, verse 11, he said, Truly I say to you, among those born of woman, there has raised no one greater than John the Baptist. This, this scripture reference is about a man called John the Baptist. This man who God called out and set apart to prepare the coming of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist, son of Zechariah and Elizabeth, and the cousin of Jesus. Now, now the word of God, the word of God tells us that John was a peculiar kind of man. Peculiar. That's the way Christians ought to be, peculiar. He lived in the woods, he wore old clothes, and he ate strange food and preached an unusual message to the Judeans who went into the wasteland to see him and to hear him. But you know what he taught? That you can never judge a book by its cover. All that shines is not gold. And all that's good, not good for you. John was a man who knew his mission and his purpose in life. He had a specific role to play in the world, and he put all of his energies into what he knew God had called him to do. Word had it that John spoke with almost irresistible authority. People were moved by his words because he spoke the truth with fearlessness and power. You see, John was clear about his purpose and his message. And he allowed no one or anything to get in the way of his preaching the message of God that had been placed on his heart. John was a mighty warrior. He was a powerful preacher. He was a dedicated man of God on a mission for God, and he was clear about it. I can hear, I can hear John preaching. I can't preach like John, but I can hear. I can hear John preaching. People of God, it's time to change your ways and stop taking God for granted. It's time to repent. It's time to change from your evil ways for the kingdom of heaven is near. Can't you hear him? People, God is not playing with you. The ax is already at the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown in the fire. That's in Matthew chapter 3, verse 10. Listen, he says, I baptize you with water. But one more powerful than I will come, the thorns of whose sandals I am not worthy to even untie. And he, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Luke 3, 16, John loved Jesus. And he was introducing him to the world, which meant he knew Jesus. However, can somebody say, however, however, however. In our scripture text, we find John the Baptist 
in prison. He was in prison because of preaching and teaching the word of God. You know, beloved, isn't it funny that sometimes you can find yourself in a bad place for doing the right thing? Sometimes we open our mouth too soon. Sometimes we say the truth too much. And let me tell you what I know. This is what I know. Speaking out for the Lord will get you in trouble sometimes. Preaching the gospel truth can get you in trouble, but it's in this trouble that the Lord finds out where our faith in him really is. It's, it's when things are not going the way we want them to go. That's the Lord find, finding out what we really made of. It's when we find ourselves all alone and mistreated and misunderstood, abused, lied on, lied to, and overpowered. Good God Almighty. That's when the test of our faith is tested. Look around and say, neighbor, pass your test. And so our scripture lesson is about a time in the life of the great John the baptizer when he just briefly, I said he, he briefly fails the test of faith. John, just like you and me, was just merely a human being. Oh, for God's sake, be human. Child of God, when we are just caught up, caught up in those rough, bad situations of life that are promised to every child of God now. Don't get it twisted, every child of God. We need to understand that there are times when we may just be temporarily, just, just may experience a shortage or a lack of faith. You know, those times when we say or we feel, why me, Lord? Why me? Lord, I've done all that I can do. I've prayed all that I can pray. And things haven't changed yet. Beloved, there are times in the best of Christians' lives when we just, just for a moment, a moment, do not understand why the Lord is allowing us to go through what we're going through. That there are those times, saints, when we are left questioning the power of Almighty God. Times when we allow our circumstances or our situation or other people to get the best of us. Times when we allow the negative to override the positive. When we allow the bad news to get more attention than the good news. When we allow our flesh to give in to the pleasure rather than the struggle. Oh, there are those times in life. There are those times in life when we are weak. Can I get an amen? When we forget to pray. When we don't want to praise God. We don't want to trust Jesus. There are times when we won't even stand our ground as a Christian. The test is can you keep Jesus first on your mind? Not just when times are good, but through it all. Now, John the baptizer was at this point in his ministry when he, I'm going to say again, just for a moment, allowed his situation to cause him to doubt the love and the power of Jesus. And so, in his anguish, his worry, his anxiety, he sent his students to ask the question of Jesus. Mm -hmm. John, John wanted to know, Jesus, are you the person who's to come? Or shall we look for someone else? Oh, wow. John. Now I can hear somebody thinking. I can hear him thinking. They say, Pastor, of all the people in the world at the time, why would John the baptizer ask Jesus if he was the one? 
John preached. John believed that Jesus was the one. Why? I'm glad you asked. Well, now you see, at this time, in this situation, John finds himself in, John is upset with the way Jesus is acting. John is just disappointed because he expected Jesus, the Messiah, to make his appearance upon the stage of history with great power and fanfare. Jesus expected a great leader who would come kindling a fire of immediate revolution. John... John saying, after all that I have done for you, Jesus, and with all of your power, how, how can you allow me to be in this dirty, run-down, cruel, lonesome, nasty prison? You know, John is saying, he's saying, I thought that you could come and get me out if you wanted to, Jesus. I thought that you could move the heaven and the earth and release me, Jesus. I thought that all power is in your hands, and yet I wonder why are you not here to save me from this punishment? I just cannot believe that you are allowing me, John the Baptist, me to suffer like this. Oh, well. Just maybe you're not all that I thought you were. Jesus, maybe you're not the one. Well, let me tell you something. John was in full human mode. Oh, we can't do nothing right or good without the Holy Spirit inside of us. He was in full human mode, ignoring the Spirit of God that was in him. It was within him sometimes, oh, sometimes, beloved. We must be careful, careful. We must be careful because just like John, we have our own expectations of, of Jesus and he does not always fulfill our desires. We expect Jesus to be our rescuer from all, 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 all trouble and difficulty. And when he does not rescue us as fast as we wish, we get an attitude. You know, there is nothing worse in a human being than a, a bad attitude. We often must take control over our attitude and remember whose child we are. We often expect Jesus to supply immediate solutions to our problems. Oh, but when solutions are slow and coming, we are just ready to just give up. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And someone asked a question of me once, and how long is, is the morning? So when we suffer from the world's hostilities or our own sin or the devil's attack, we're ready to lose our faith in Jesus. Oh, don't give people that much power over you. But as Christians, we ought to say and have an attitude that is so different from those who say they're Christians, but they not. Oh, glory to God. You know, if you're a Christian, other people will know it. And this is what we, our attitude ought to be. I know I'm suffering now. Yeah, but, but God has a purpose <laughs> in it for my good. Ooh. I know I haven't worked hard and yet I have no money, but God has a purpose in it for my good. I, I know that I gave my children all that I had to give. And you look at them now. Look at them. But God had a purpose in it for my good. Oh, I've learned, beloved, that Jesus does not come to meet my expectations. But Jesus comes to meet my 
needs. Oh, help me in here, somebody. Meet my needs. There's a difference between what we expect and what we need. There's a difference between what I want to happen and what I need to happen. Jesus comes to meet my needs. Sometimes the needs I'm not even aware of that I need. <laughs> he goes deep. What can this lesson teach her that will take make her come closer to me? The word of God promises that all things. Do we believe that? All things, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the large and the small, all things work together for good. For those, not everybody now, for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, make sure you live in your purpose in God. And you'll be safe in his arms. Listen now, beloved, I know you're not going to like this truth, but sometimes, sometimes we need some trouble. I remember hearing a preacher preaching and using an illustration. He said he had a big, fine car, and, and he was just driving, and he had a long way to go, and his car just would just relax him on, on uh, automatic cruise. Is that what you call it? <laughs> is, that, is that what you call it? Cruise control. Thank you, children. You put it on. That tells you if I had many big time cars. He put his car on cruise control. And he said it was going so smooth <laughs> that it loved him to sleep. He said, however, the thing that woke him up was the bumps in the road. Sometimes we get so relaxed, we don't want to praise. Sometimes we get so relaxed, we don't want to pray. Sometimes we get so relaxed, we forget where we come from and want to talk about somebody else. Huh? Oh, sometimes we need some bumps in the road. So God can say, listen. You ain't all of that. I saved you from yourself. With a bump. In the road. Oh, sometime I, 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 I've learned, beloved, that Jesus and trouble can go hand in hand. Ain't it true? Ain't it true? Romans 5, 3 and 5 says that we Christians, mm, a woman called and read me this when I was just really, really depressed down, couldn't get up out the bed, just, just at my rope's end, so I thought. One of the church members called me and she said, why does I want you to open your Bible? I want you to open your Bible to Romans 5, 3 through and it says, it says that Christians, Christians now, we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. <laughs> That's what was wrong with some young people. They haven't been through enough to know how to endure. So you, they break a fingernail and then they go into a panic. Knowing that suffering produces endurance because endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not disappoint us <clears throat> because God's love has been poured into our hearts. I said into our hearts. When love is poured into our hearts, <clears throat> something happens. <clears throat> and many times we don't need to understand what Jesus is up to. When people talk about you, it's okay. 
It ain't your business. When Jesus is with you through the valleys of life, it's okay because the Lord is our shepherd. John the baptizer did not understand what was going on. Therefore, John, he sent his people. He sent his team, his disciples. And he sent them with a question for Jesus. You got to be careful now. Got to be careful. That sweet little Jesus boy ain't always the sweet little Jesus boy in the word of God. You don't mess with Jesus. Just like Jesus always was, he was ready for questions. And he was ready with an answer. Jesus was a strong man. He had no fear of people. Jesus' disciples said to Jesus, Jesus, take a break. Jesus, <clears throat> Jesus, John, they made it clear because they scared by this time. They said, John wants to know. John told us to come ask you something. John wants to know Jesus. Are you the one? Or should he be looking for another? And Jesus answered. He didn't say, I don't know. He didn't say, oh, John said that. Jesus didn't say, John don't like me. Jesus said, you go and tell John. You go and tell John about what you hear and what you see. You tell John that when I'm around, the blind receive their sight. <laughs> ah, and the lame walk. When I'm around, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the man who takes no offense at me. Yeah. See, that's why it ain't about us. Jesus say, touch not my anointed. Jesus said to John, don't take no offense at me, man, because I know why I'm here. You the one, some might, I don't know what could happen to you, because ain't nothing going to stop God from using me, John. I'm the one you go and tell John to remember the things he has witnessed for himself. Jesus said that I did. Hmm. You go tell John I'm about my Father's business, not John's business. I just love Jesus. I love Jesus. He did not cower down ever, ever, ever. Now, Jesus was not only fussing or confronting John as much as he was reminding him of his purpose and his power. And you see, like us, John was merely human while God is fully Jesus is fully God our whole life will change when we know who God is and who we are not oh Lord God help us help us today Jesus help us beloved there are times when we just need to tell ourselves and our friends and our family what the word of God says and we need to remember we need to remember before we open our mouths just remember what the Lord has already done for us 
Sometimes we just need to take the time just to reminisce about how good the Lord has been to us. We need to never forget the miracles that Jesus performs in our lives every day, every hour, every minute, and every second. We need to see and hear what the Lord has done for us and tell somebody, oh, listen, listen, I see miracles from the Lord every single day. In fact, do you know what? When I look at you, I see a miracle. Tell yourself, say, I'm a miracle. Praise God. Oh, child of God, I have a word for each of you. Jesus knows every hand that touches you. And he knows how long he will allow them to push you around. Jesus knows just how much you can bear. That means we safe in the arms of Jesus. We put too much attention on people. People are just people. We can't expect them to be who Jesus is. We can't expect them to do what Jesus does. Just come bring your burdens to the Lord and then what you do? Leave them here. Jesus knows when to allow the trouble to come. Jesus knows when to cut the trouble off. We safe. Be safe in his arms. Jesus knows when to rest you. Sometimes he'll make you lie down. You wonder why you're sick? Because he know you won't quit. He make you lie down in green pastures because he loves you. Jesus knows when to give us the strength we need to get by. Jesus knows when to give us the victory. Oh, when we feel weak. Oh, when you feel depressed, when you get lonely, when your money's funny, when you lose your joy, don't be afraid, don't be sad, because Jesus is coming to our rescue because Jesus has all power and authority in his hands. We are safe in the arms of Jesus. Oh, my beloved, my beloved, during this Christmas season, in these last three years, three years, we've all been through a lot. Can I get an amen? After going through so much pain, sickness, death, joblessness, money's funny, family in need, children sick, a lack of human touch, we've got to learn how to imagine what it is to be in the arms of Jesus. You can't be touching everybody today. Oh, but you got two arms. Touch yourself. Oh, wrap your arms around yourself as if you're in the arms of Jesus. In prison, in the hospital, in the local jail, in an ambulance, we are still safe in the arms of Jesus. And my testimony today is found in one of my favorite songs. You know, you ought to have a way of saying when negative stuff gets in your mind, just say delete and then put the favorite song in your mind. One of my favorite songs is, is safe in his arms. Ah, oh, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream. Oh, he restores my failing health. And he helps me to do what honors him the most. 
That's why I'm safe. That's why I'm healed. That's why I am where I am. That's why. Because I'm safe. In his arms. Sing it for my daughter. Because the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Oh, hallelujah. He lets me rest in the meadow's grass. And he, and he leads me beside the quiet streams. He restores my failing health. Hallelujah. And he helps me to do what honors him the most that's why i'm saved that's why i'm saved that's why i'm saved i'm saved When the storms of life, of life, keep raging, and the billows, and the billows, and the billows roll, oh, they begin to roll, and I, I'm the That's the message for us this season. No matter what's going on, you can't find safety in the toys. I want, I want to say, stop looking for Santa Claus. We can only be safe. Come on, Jesus. Come on, we need you. We know you're coming. We're so excited. There's hope in your coming. There's hope in your birth. There's hope in your presence. There's hope in your touch. Touch us, Lord, touch us.
holding on to us and we're holding on to you. And then we will realize for sure, for sure, for sure, this truth that we are safe. Somebody, somebody out there watching, you don't know him. Oh, but my prayer is that you will know him. My hope, my desire is that the world will come to Jesus. He's coming. He comes every year just to remind us that he's kind enough to let us celebrate his birthday because he brings us the toys and the gadgets. He feeds us the food on the table. It's all about Jesus. And so I invite you to receive him by any means possible. You can, you can call us. You can go to a church nearby. But find a church home. Even if you make the church home your home, watching and hearing the word of God every Sunday, there's no excuse. It's the only safety that's real in a world that's so confused. He's the only safety you'll ever find. Never give up. Send your offerings and your tithes as you do. We appreciate it. Not so much for us, but because it's what God said do. And so as we leave this sanctuary and as the spirit of almighty God flows through every virtual outlet, we give him praise. We give him honor. We glorify him. There is nobody like Jesus. And so as you stand, everybody, just stand. And as you leave this place, know that you know that you know that you're safe in the arms. Take it with you and feed on it. To God be the glory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Let the church say, I'll oh, give the Lord a hand of praise. He's worthy. Let the church say, God has God spoken. spoken. Let, the church, Let the church say amen.